Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel, the best place for who wants to be a better player in the global market. In this video, I'm talking about avoid A4 paper scams and show how to avoid scams. I think you are going to get some really good ideas. The possibilities are truly endless when it comes to building your business and be your own boss. So if you are excited about learning international trade, if you are excited about becoming a better player in the global market, make sure you hit that like button. It helps us get seen by more people here on YouTube. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I remember when I moved to Thailand, many of my friends or their friends called me and told me they want to export A4 paper from Thailand and found some companies online and gave them unrealistic, cheaper prices. After all this calling, I decided to research this term. Now I try to explain the A4 paper market and scams. A4 paper is a highly popular product in international trade and for good reason. It is one of the most widely used commodities in the world used for the printing of magazines, forms, letters, and other official documents. It is, in fact, the standard paper size in almost all countries of the world apart from some in North America which have opted for different dimensions. The top A4 paper exporters in the world include China, Indonesia, Thailand, Portugal, Singapore, and Brazil. The highest ranking importer is Japan. In this video, I would like to discuss some common scams associated with this thriving business that fraudsters use to rip off unsuspecting entrepreneurs. I will also consider the threats that these online scams pose to international traders, how to protect your business interests, and how to report fraud in case you fall, the victim. I will finally consider how to get started on a lucrative business opportunity. Let's look together common scamming tactics in A4 paper trade. All forms of business are prone to some level of risk. One of the biggest threats to international trade is getting scammed. This, of course, arises from the fact that most aspects of the business are conducted without any physical contact and are mostly internet-based. Thousands of traders from all corners of the world fall prey to scammers every year. These fraudsters are usually experts who have honed their skills over the years and their methods are hard but not impossible to detect. Virtually anyone can get scammed no matter how experienced or smart you happen to be unless you know the telltale signs. Here are some of the common tactics employed in the import-export industry. 1. Pricing. One of the easiest lures that scammers use is an unbeatable price. This is usually significantly lower than the international average but not too low as to arouse suspicion. And since traders are always out for the best bargain, they easily score their first point. 2. Payments. Many scammers push buyers to make a deposit up front to secure the deal or kickstart the manufacturing process. This might be in the range of 30 to 40% of the total trade volume and could bear a fancy label to offset doubt. The supposed supplier will make it seem like you cannot get the product from any supplier without making such a payment. 3. Fake Sales Reps This is one of the oldest tricks in the books, but amazingly, it still works. Some fraudsters pose as agents of real and respectable export companies. This is highly successful because many suppliers take their time to dig into the existence and validity of the company and forget to investigate the representative. 4. Fake Companies some supposed vendors set up traceable companies in the countries popularly known as wholesale A4 paper suppliers. They might carry out activities with the company for about a year or so to leave a trace and then close it. If they don't happen to be residents of the country in question, they might take a trip there and buy a SIM card and set up a bank account. Such scammers often operate using WhatsApp accounts registered on that SIM card to ward off suspicion. The Negative Effects of Online Scams financial loss. While this seems a bit obvious it cannot be understated especially in the international trade arena. Most purchases made in this field are usually in huge amounts to take advantage of the economies of scale. This makes for massive losses when such purchases turn out to be scams. Loss of confidence in international trade. Most of the victims of such scams can hardly dare to venture into the import-export trade ever again. They begin to view all forms of the trade with suspicion and this hugely limits the potential they could have reached if they had not met with such an occurrence. Additional costs to pursue fraud cases. Pursuing any legal case takes lots of time and money. It is even worse when the case in question involves an almost non-existent company operating abroad. 
The worst part, however, is that even after spending so much there are no guarantees that you will get your money back. Business Failure For some small traders, this often marks the crippling and eventual collapse of their business especially if it is a startup. Such business people could even be operating on borrowed funds meaning that such a loss is completely devastating to their finances as well. How to protect your business from scammers The international trade business is one of the most lucrative in the world and for this reason scammers will do everything in their power to get a share of the pie. Considering the high financial input usually injected into this kind of business, it is very important to know how to protect your interests. Take the following points into consideration before initiating any form of trade with an unknown third party. 1. Ask for relevant documents. Every genuine exporter has some form of documentation from relevant authorities in their country of operation confirming their validity. Always ask a new supplier for their export license and any other documents that could help you verify their legitimacy. Any company or individual that refuses or hesitates to furnish you with these documents raises eyebrows. If in fact, a supplier insists that they will only share such information after a financial transaction then you should, by all means, walk away. A point of caution though is that some experienced conmen have fake documentation to back up their operations. To avoid falling for this, you could go the extra mile to counter check them with the export authorities in their countries. 2. Do not make payments up front. Negotiations with fraudsters most often revolve around financial matters since they want to make as much as they can as soon as possible. Avoid any trader who demands payment up front. There are lots of financial instruments to prevent risky transactions. Make use of letters of credit or escrow services both of which offer some level of security for both parties involved by delaying payment until you confirm your goods will arrive. 3. Request for a meeting. Considering the high financial risk as well as the profitability potential in the import-export business, you should consider arranging for a table-top meeting with any major supplier. More often than not, those who insist on operating online and give excuses to avoid meeting are scammers. In this term, I have a funny story before I faced it. One of my friends from Turkey called me and said that they found a company for exporting A4 paper and they gave him the cheapest prices for products. And he asked me to contact the company and visit their office and look at the papers. Then, I called the company, they didn't answer and they have also WhatsApp I send a message and told them, I am in Thailand and request meeting. They directly told me if I want to visit their office make an advance payment 40% before the meeting. So I closed the phone and called my friend and tell him never to contact them again, they are a scammer. 4. Avoid signing contracts prematurely. Some fraudsters might pressure you into signing contracts to move to the next transaction level. Certain terms in such contracts might be crafty or even damning. This may make it difficult to take legal recourse in the event of a fraudulent deal. Whenever you feel pressured to sign a contract, take a back seat and conduct a thorough analysis. Avoid dealing with A4 paper distributors who place you under pressure and make you feel rushed. 5. Check online presence. There are lots of genuine traders who operate without an online presence. But scammers take advantage of this fact to simplify their exploits. It is wise to tread carefully when dealing with any such trader as the verification process is so much more complicated. But this is not to say that those who have a thriving profile and active web presence are all legitimate. Some go beyond the obvious to create a foolproof scam site. You need to look beyond this and dig deeper to verify that they are who they claim to be. How to report a scammer. Many victims of internet scams hold back from reporting assuming that nothing can be done. While it is true that pursuing online scammers might be challenging, it is not impossible. Additionally, when you report a scam, you help others to avoid falling prey to the same fraudsters or similar tactics. There are different reporting agencies in place that protect traders from such scammers. You need to identify the particular one that handles such complaints in the fraudster's country of residence as well as your own home country. Forward all the information that you have to such authorities and follow up with them consistently. You could also post your experience on relevant online sites to help get the word out. How to start trading A4 paper. Buying A4 paper wholesale from manufacturers makes the trade highly worthwhile by increasing the profit margin. This eliminates the middleman from the equation and makes it possible to maintain a competitive edge in this highly profitable venture. However, the most challenging part of it all is getting started. 
Even though the advent of the internet has greatly simplified trade and made it possible to create international business networks, it has also created a major roadblock. The web is, in fact, rife with scams and it is difficult to tell apart genuine A4 paper suppliers from swindlers. As with any other business, trading in A4 paper requires that you set out a detailed business plan. As the name suggests, a business plan is a scheme that details everything about your trade. This helps you to get a detailed perspective on your intended operations and guides you in formulating an appropriate approach. This greatly reduces the chances of failure and makes it easy to assess performance and improve accordingly. Even though there are no rules to writing your custom plan, there are several details that must feature prominently. 1. Vision and Mission This is the core of any business as it defines your objectives for starting your company. It also specifies your target market, the problems they face, and the solution you intend to offer them. More importantly, it shows how your approach differs from that of your competition. 2. Market Evaluation this part of your plan narrows down on your intended market and is particularly crucial for import-export trade. Different countries have varying cultures and regulations that impact on the way trade is carried out. You need to examine these and other pertinent factors in your market in great detail. This will help you avoid unexpected roadblocks along the way and also help you get feedback on gaps in the current supply chain. 3. Business Strategy This covers a wide range of aspects that will determine the smooth running of your operations. In the import business, a major consideration is product sourcing. A4 paper price might seem highly enticing from the main exporting countries but you need to consider the logistics of getting it to the target market. Factor in all expenses including shipping, insurance, and customs clearance to determine the final price and establish whether you will still have an edge over the competition. A crucial point to note is that A4 size paper manufacturers calculate the price based on order quantities. This means that the bigger your order, the lower the average cost. Another important consideration here is the marketing strategy that you will employ. When venturing out into a new market it is foolhardy to stock up without a serious strategy in place. Finally, last but not the least, if you are satisfied with this video just share it with your friends and comment below. Your comment is very crucial for me. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Like, comment and share with your friends. I appreciated all your support. Enjoy your journey.